So especially in those 18 years, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is deeply in the mood of separation. Especially what he saw, what Uddhav saw when he came to Vrindavan, and Radhika tasted, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tasted that in Jagannath. Mahaprabhu is Krishna tasting the mood of Radhika. So Krishna not have that much power to taste that. Krishna has prem, but Krishna's prem only goes to Mahabhav. It uh, goes to Mahabhav. Not more than that. But Radhika's prem goes all the way to Madanakya Mahabhav. So just like if you have a 60 watt light bulb and you put 500 watts through it, what happens? It explodes. So when Krishna tried to taste these moods of Radharani, then his brain, his mind, everything explodes. Therefore, we never heard, we hear about the ecstatic transformations of Mahaprabhu. Sometimes his hands and legs would go on his body, like a tortoise. No arms, no legs, no head, nothing. Like that. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would rub his face on the wall of the Gambia. Gambia. But we never heard Radhika doing like this. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would rub his face on the wall, devotees felt great pain. So they put one devotee with Lord Chaitanya, always. His name was Shankar, Shankar Panda. They call him the pillow of Lord Chaitanya. To make sure Lord Chaitanya would not rub his nose and face on the wall, he would sleep with Lord Chaitanya. He would keep Lord Chaitanya's feet on his chest like a pillow. And if Chaitanya Map would wake up, then he would also wake up. So Shankar Pandit have too much good fortune. But sometimes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would disappear completely. The real name of Gambira is called Radhakanta, Mat. This was owned by Kasi Mishra, the guru of the king of Puri. So they had three doors to keep Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inside. But sometimes he would escape these three doors. And devotees would look for him. So Surup Damada and other devotees would go one way. Ramananda Roy, other devotees would go another way. They would search for him. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would see the ocean to be Yamuna. So in the ecstasy of Vrindavan, he would jump in the ocean. So the current would take him down a long way. So one day, Surup, the next morning, Surup Damada was still looking for him. And they came across one fisherman. That fisherman was chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. In great ecstasy. So they asked, what happened? Fisherman said, last night I was fishing. And I caught a big fish. <laughs> when I pulled on the net, 
I saw it was not a fish, it was a dead body. And this dead body was very long. So the fisherman tried to throw the dead body from his fishing net. In doing so, he touched that dead body. That was not dead body, that was Lord Chaitanya. But in ecstasy, his body had become like 20 feet long. All the joints of the fingers, hands, wrist, elbow, all the joints of the body stretched. So it was like 20 foot long. So when he touched Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya's mercy came, he began chanting Hare Krishna like a mad person. So, Sarup Damada could understand. He said, that was no dead body, that was Lord Chaitanya. That fisherman said, no, I know Lord Chaitanya. Because Lord Chaitanya stayed 18 years in Puri. So the fisherman saw Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya would go to the temple of Jagannath. He would go for bathing in the ocean every day. So the fisherman had seen Lord Chaitanya. So the fisherman said, this is not Lord Chaitanya. I know Lord Chaitanya, this is something else. So when I touched this dead body, the ghost went inside me. That ghost makes me chant Hari now. So I became afraid. So I began chanting the name of Nusringadev. When you chant the name of the Shrinidad, then ghost runs away. But this ghost became more powerful. <laughs> the more I chant the name of the Shrinidad, this ghost becomes more and more stronger. So Surup Damada said, take me to this ghost. Then they saw the Vigraha of Lord Chaitanya on the beach. Because Lord Chaitanya had been in the salt water, his body was white. And covered by sand. So Surup Damada slapped the fisherman. Surup Damada said, I'm an Oja. Oja means who captures ghosts. Oja. Surup Damada said, I'm an Oja. Come here. And he slapped him. Then fishermen became a little normal again. That last time, Lord Chaitanya was speaking something. Because he was unconscious. Devotee have three states, internal, external, and 50-50. So Lord Chaitanya was fully in internal consciousness. So he was speaking something. That time Rupa Goswami was also there. What was Lord Chaitanya speaking? That time Lord Chaitanya spoke Upadesh Amrita. And Rupa Goswami heard all these, these verses from the mouth of Lord Chaitanya. And he wrote, Actually this Upadesh Amrita would have been lost. But it was found by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Yes, people don't know this. Even I didn't know this until last year. Bhaktivinoda Thakur came to Vrindavan. 
I think he only came once. He had many sicknesses, eye problems, stomach problems. So he prayed to Radharani. Oh Radharani, I am not asking you to destroy my karma. Bhagavan is not our servant. I'm not asking you for that. Bhagavan is not like a janitor or a cleaner. A garbage collector. So but to not I'm not praying destroy my karma. But please don't make me sick in Vrindavan. After Vrindavan, no problem. But I want to be healthy in Vrindavan. That time he associated with Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. And also because he had a very high position as a district magistrate, he went to the library of Radha Raman. Actually the Goswamis were great scholars, great scholars. So they had their collection of books. I think Jiva Goswami alone wrote more than 320,000 verses. Jiva Goswami alone. So all these books were there. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur was looking through them. That time he found Upadesh Amrita, hidden somewhere. Then in great ecstasy he made a copy and he printed that. So we want to be Rupanugas. All Gaudiya Vaishnavas have the pride. We are followers of Rupa Goswami. Whether Dasiras, Sakiras, Batsali or Madhuriras, everyone has to follow Rupa Goswami. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made him Abhidaya Acharya. Abhidaya means the process of bhakti, the process of sudden bhakti. Sadhan bina sadhivastu kehu nahipai. Without proper sadhan, without proper practice, you cannot achieve the goal. So 64 limbs of Vaidhi Bhakti, this was given by Mahaprabhu to Sanatana Goswami. But what are the limbs of Raganuga Bhakti? What is the special sadhana for those in Raganuga Bhakti? If you read Jaiva Dharma, there's 64 limbs of Bhakti are there. But this is for Vaidhi Bhakti. And Vidhi Bhakti Brajabha Paiti Nahi Shakti. Vaidhi Bhakti cannot give you the mood of the bridge buses. Not have that power. So how to do sudden how to do Raganuga Bhakti? This is not explained by any acharya before Rupa Goswami. Because everyone doing Vaidhi Bhakti. Even Ramanujacharya, Madhvacharya. Vishnu Swami, Nimbaditya, these are all followers of Vidhiba. So Rupa Goswami wrote many wonderful things. So how to do sadhan, how to how to do sadhan properly, this is all by the mercy of Rupa Goswami. Only eleven verses. So especially how to associate with Vaishnavas. Again and again we hear Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastra Koi, Labamatra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhiho. Even a moment association with a Sadhu, you can achieve all perfection. <laughs> so, one guitar came in my mind, but it's Sadhu Sangha have so much glories. 
But if I associate with Hanuman or Narad or even Lord Brahma or Prahlad, this mood they cannot give directly. They're all are following Vadiba. One time Gurudev said, if Hanuman is next door giving lecture, we will not go. In what mood Gurudev spoke such a thing? In his mood as a Dasi of Radhika, Hanuman cannot help us. No? Of course, Hanuman can bless and you go in your own direction. Direct this mood, even Hanuman cannot do. So which type of sadhu we have to associate with? And in which way we should associate? This is very critical. Rupa Goswami talked about, because we cannot go to Bhagawan, so first we have to go to the Vaishnavas. Service to Vaishnavas is not different than the service of Bhagawan. But more powerful, more glorious. Because Bhagawan cannot give bhakti, but Vaishnav can give bhakti. So, bhakti means to serve. Service means with relationship. How do I make relationship with devotee? Therefore, Rupa Goswami is the Dati, what is it? Dati is particular. Guru Makiri Punkte, Bhoja De Cheva, Sarvidi Bhakti, Pretty Lakshmi. Six ways to make and uh, develop affection with Vaishnavas. If we do these six with materialistic persons, you will lose everything. If someone, even someone may take diksha, but they're not following, we should not associate with them. These people are like poison. No? So three levels of devotees then. Kanishta, Madhyam, and Uta. But association with Madhya Madhikari is too much auspicious, too much important for us. Because even if your Guru is Uttu Madhikari, but you are not Uttu Madhikari, you cannot understand him perfectly. If Guru Dev is Uttu Madhikari, but you are Kanishta Adhikari, Kanesha Adhikari has no vision how to see the Uttama Adhikari. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, if disciple is Kanishta and Guru is Uttam, the Kanishta disciple has no power to see how Guru Dev is Uttama Adhikari. He has no power. He cannot see. Yes, Guru Dev is Uttama Adhikari. He says by mouth, but he cannot see it. Everyone is saying, so he also says. If you are Kanesha Adhikari, you can only see Gurudev like Madhya Madhika. You cannot perceive him properly. You cannot see him properly. But if disciple is Madhya Madhikari, then he has power to see how Gurudev, what it means to be Uttu Madhikari. He can see, can understand. Because Madhyam Adhikari also touching them. They're touching Uttu Madhika. They're touching them. So how to behave with Kanishka? How to behave with Madhyam? How to behave with Uttam? We don't know. Therefore we have to take adv advice and association of the Madhyam Adhika. And even if Uttamadikari becomes Guru in this world, they come down to the level of Madhya Madhika. Otherwise they cannot make disciples, they cannot give instruction. 
This Ujjumari Kari sees everyone is perfect. Everyone is serving Bhagavan except for me. So in this mood, how can they make disciples? How can they give instruction? They cannot. So we need association of Madhyamarika. Either genuine Madhyamarikari or Ujjumarikari who comes down to that platform. So the Dati, what? So we should do service, offering what they want, what Vaishnav wants. Maybe devotees like Gurudev needs millions of dollars, millions of dollars to build temples like Govardhan and Navadvi. This is no material desire. Maybe he's like that. Or maybe he's like Gokashodas Babaji Maharaj. <laughs> Naked, no cloth, no temple, no house, no nothing. Also need intelligence, how to serve. So what they need, we should look. Till like ball. So, anyway, according to intelligence, we will understand. And they will also give us something in return. So, this is exchange, loving exchange. Giving something and also receiving something. Like it says, when you come to temple, you should never come empty-handed. should bring a flower, one rupee. Yesterday is one, one bus <coughs> who comes every day to yoga mind. And every day he puts one rupee in the box. <laughs> Means he's giving something. Takuji giving us how much? Beautiful darshan. How much giving? So we should also give something. Giving prasad. But if someone is not following Bhakti, not following Guru Vaishnav, we should not accept anything from them. This will be the cause of our fall down. Like you see, Didi should never take anything from outside. My glass is there. Here. Never take anything from outside, even from another temple, not take. <laughs> Who is cooking, what mood they offer to Bhagavan. If you take that, when I first came to temple, there was prashad distribution. And I was sitting in the line with everyone. And there was one guy sitting next to me. I think you have to wash it. Then Gurudev was walking past, he said in English, so the man would not understand. He said, never sit next to anyone who has not taken diksha. Don't eat with them. So this offering prashad, receiving prashad. Like if devotees come from overseas and they bring some avocados for tapaji or some nice fruits, did you always become too much happy? Or this person thinking or with a service mood, I will come and do some service. And then most importantly, some harikata. Good have said, how we know Vaishnava is angry with us, they don't speak harikata to us. I see so many people speaking with Didi, but just rubbish. No one ever asks her any question on Bhajan. Many people here living here, but don't, no question on Bhajan. They stay many years here, but no relation, no Bhajan. Many people you see. One time in Italy, I remember Rojo was playing soccer. 
instead of here, here in Buddha. Anyway, so hundreds of people were seeing Guru Dev. Then Guru Dev was there two hours, three hours. Then Guru Dev said to me, not even one person asked me about Bhakti. Not even one person. I have this problem, this guy's like that, he's doing this to me, my husband has got financial problem. Did no one person ask anything about budget? So we should not waste our time with Vaishnavas. So there's six things. Like we make offense to devotee, how we know devotee has forgiven us? They speak Harikata to us. So according to the level of devotee, we should behave appropriately. Krishna Tiyashi Kiritam Anyone who chants Krishna's name even once. Half Upadesha Brita is just about Vaishnav Sangha. Because you do Vaishnav Sangha properly, Bhagavan Sangha is very... <laughs> That's coming next, very easily. Anayasik Pabhikiritha. Anyone who chants Krishna's name. And they are free from Mayava. And free from illicit connection with women. This Kanishta Adhikari we can respect in mind. Everyone wants respect, but we have to pay some price for that. So, who's free from Mayavad, free from innocent connection with women, this Kanishyadikari we respect in mind. He's Krishna's family member, or she, Krishna's family. But who took Diksha? in real sense. Two types of diction. One is Anustanic and one is Vastavic. Anustanic means I heard the mantra, I sit in the fire yagya, I shave my head, I get a new name, But heart has not changed. Right? This is anustanic diction. Like form, not formality. One time Gorgon he was he was angry because I said, is diction just a formality? I asked him, is diction just a formality? And he became very disappointed. Who is telling you this rubbish? I said, suited way too much. No, just joking. <laughs> so, anyway. And one is Vastavik Diksha. We took Diksha and feeling some Bandha Gyan. Divigyan Rede Prakasit. We're feeling relationship. I'm, I'm in Gopi Baba. I'm this Dasi of Radhika. I am the sucker of Krishna. I am the mother and father of Krishna. If Radhika is my Swamini, what relationship I have with Nandaba? What relation I have with Yasoda? What relation I have with Chandravali or even Krishna? These feelings, this is real diction. Yastavi diction. Who took Diksha really with these feelings to that Madhya Madhikari I do pranam. Bowing here. The association of this Madhya Madhikari I can get back. But even that Madhya Madhikari, some obstacle is still there. Actually, even in the stage of Bhav. That even the devotee in the stage of Bhav is still conditioned so. Hmm. 
imagine. <laughs> He's a conditioned soul, come on. It's not so easy to become unconditioned. <laughs> Even Madhi Madhi Kari have obstacles. Srila Srila Maharaj, they have one foot in spiritual world and one foot here. But we do pranam. And what is quality of Uttamadi Kari? Nindadi Sunya. <laughs> they never criticize anyone. Of course, we see Gurudev would criticize his disciples, Gorgamaj would criticize. This is because they're acting on platform of Madhyam. Madhyam means to criticize. Madhyam means to fight. To fight against misconception. So even they criticize, Uttamadi Kari may speak something or but this is full of affection. Someone said, oh, if Gurudev doesn't like me, I will give up the body. This means you are fully stupid. Fully stupid. You have no idea, you have no understanding of it. What is their affection? Their affection is not everything you do is very good. That is not their affection. Their affection is true for Radha Krishna Seva. So who is more? So they it said they see Bhagavad, they see their Ishtadev everywhere. Nija Ishtadev is for Bhagavad they see their mood everywhere. Ish Bhagavad Bhava Matmana. It's everything favorable, everything connected with their Ishtada. I heard one time Gurudev was going for a morning walk with Satsuruk Maharaj. Then everything was green, green, rainy season. Then Gurudev said when Radha Krishna, Krishna is gold, black, Radhika is white, yellow, when they come together this is green. Everywhere he's seen, this Radha Krishna, Radha Krishna. So they see their Ishtadev, everything they see according to their own mood. We cannot understand that. Even Krishna they see according to their own mood. So when they're absorbed in their internal mood, that time they see no maya, no duality. So on that stage, Chivakrama has explained to them, when pure devotee is talking with you, he is Madhya Madhika. Huh. But when you go away, he goes back to Uttam. <laughs> By his meditation. Once or twice Maharaj says that when Didi speaks to us, this is big mercy of Yoga Maya. Otherwise without Yoga Maya, she not see us, not speak to us now. So Bhajanam Vigyam, they have no obstacles in their budget. No obstacles. Bhajanam Vigyam, Vigyam means expert, they're expert in devotion. 24 hours a day they can remember Radha Krishna. They can remember this. They do not forget. Talking, eating, sleeping, ha ha hu hu. They always remember. So this type of devotee, how we should see them? If Rupa Goswami gives them the next verse, He gives a beautiful example of the Ganga or Yamuna. Now Yamuna in full flood here, full. You can see so much bubbles, mud, dead dogs. 
It seems you there are many imperfections in the gun. But this, uh, these imperfections are not real. These imperfections cannot affect the transcendence of the gun. So Vaishnav may have some defect according to your vision. Maybe they're born in low family, Kiko. <laughs> Kiko. Maybe born in low family, maybe not educated. Maybe they're a little rough, lazy. Maybe disease will be there. Because as long as you have this body, defect will be there. But Vaishnava is not the body. They're not on body level, they're on Atma level. Sarup. So the imperfections that we see, doesn't matter. It cannot change them. It cannot affect their transcendental service to Radha Krishna. What does it mean a Vaishnava is perfect? What does it mean? Does it mean they don't forget verses? Does it mean they don't make mistakes? Or they... <laughs> Maybe that, that they buy the train ticket for the wrong day? This means they're not perfect? Someone cheats them? Is that the meaning of perfection? Is not the meaning of perfection of a Vaishnava. Perfection means in all stages they always remember Radha Krishna. That is their perfection. But we cannot see that seva. How they are serving Radha Krishna, we cannot see that. We see Vaishnava sitting on a chair or cooking or sleeping. Or but how they are serving Radha Krishna, we have no vision for that. So therefore, this is one thing, to see the defects in Vaishnava, but not be affected by it. This is the great dichotomy. Anyway, need mercy for this type of vision. You need mercy for this type of vision of Vaishnavas. Like sometimes we see Gurudev, it seems, has too much affection for someone or too much faith in someone and that person cheats them, that person deceives them. This is like, so many people look, oh, if Gurudev know, he should be omniscient, why he not know this, why he not see this? Like someone may cheat, cheat a Vaishnav, steal from them, deceive them, why they're deceived. Many, many things are there, no? So we have to be ready to harmonize all these things. <laughs> like Trivikra Maharaj, very rough speaking. And also in old age, some disease may be there. But if you concentrate on that, you will be deceived. Like Bhaman Maharaj says, bhakti hides itself. Like Bhagavan Vishnu ordered Sankracharya, hide me, cover devotion, hide my sarup, preach mayavad. So bhakti should be hidden from unqualified persons. That's why sometimes even high class Vaishnava have sickness, disease, obstacle, depression. 
This is to cheat the materialistic persons. Like you see, high class devotee also becomes sick, suffering. Then a demonic person will think, what's the use of whole life, Hari Ram, Hari Krishna? Look at this guy, look how much he's suffering. In this way, Vaishnava hides the, the glories of devotion from the unqualified persons. There's one story, Narottam Thakur. Narottam Thakur was not born in a Brahmin family. But he was initiating Brahmins. General rule is you should initiate own, own caste or lower. General rule. Like Sudras also have Gurus, Chatris also have Gurus, Brahmanas also have Gurus, but the Guru is always on the same level. Like Arjuna had a Guru, Dronacharya, <laughs> Pariksit had a Guru, but the Guru was same level or less, or higher. So many people were criticizing Narutam Thakur. He is low born, who is he to initiate Brahman? Actually, by qualities, Narutam Thakur is the topmost Brahman. Because a Vaishnava automatically possesses all the saintly qualities of the Brahmanas. And a Vaishnava who is not Bra a Brahman who is not devotee is not accepted by Bhagavan. They should not be seen or touched even Brahman who is not Vaishnava. So many people were criticizing Narutam Thakur. And end of his life he was pa paralyzed. paralyzed. So many people criticizing. Ha! See! He did offense by initiating Brahmanas. Now look how much he suffered. So when the disciples of Narutam Thakur heard this, they felt very much distressed. So they prayed to Gurudev, Gurudev, we cannot tolerate this, what they say about it. So Narutam immediately stood up, became unparalyzed <laughs> in one second. He went on Harinam, <laughs> giving class, everything like before. Well, Vaishnava is very wonderful, very wonderful, very, very difficult to understand. So many people left Gurudev, so many people left Vaishnava, but they see some defect. But that defect never changes, it, it does not affect them. It has no bearing on them. Like if you went to the public toilet and you saw a piece of gold in the bottom, What would you do, Ro? In the same way, Vaishnava should be seen like that. But who can understand Vaishnava, Kriya, Mudra, Vigyan, Namajir? Even Brahma and Shiva not perfectly understand this stuff. Even very, very learned persons not understand this stuff. But if you can understand, you go next to get promotion. Even Krishna may be seen to have many defects. <laughs> A human being has 18 defects. I cannot remember now, but just looking at Raho, many come to mind. like sleep, hunger, thirst, anger, lust, 
You get the idea. If you look in Bhagavatam, you'll see these 18 defects in Krishna. When Madhisoda put him down to save the milk, he became angry and bit his lips like this. This is anger. Why is angry? Because hungry? This is another defect. But these defects cannot affect Krishna's transcendence. These defects are also transcendental. So if you can adjust this in the character of Vaishnav, you will adjust it with the character of Bhagavan. Like Radhika says, Asli Sava Panadupanashtuma Madashana Mamam Hata Kuroti. material life, if we see someone's good qualities, our affection increases in material life. Like if Roho won the lottery, I would be writing to him every day, my dear Roho, how are you? I miss you so much. In material life, if someone has good qualities, your affection increases. If someone is beautiful, we talk to them. If someone is wealthy, we talk to them. And someone have bad qualities, we neglect in material life. But Radhika is not like that. Even defects in Krishna, her love for Krishna not increase. Therefore she says, Asli Sabha Pradha Panashtam Adashana Mamahat. All these verses spoken by Radhika. Lampada Mat Pranasna to Saevanapa. He is debauchee, but still he is my prananath, my life and soul. So Krishna's so-called defects not decrease her love for him. In the same way, so-called good qualities. Bhakti Pragyan Kesumarasya. If you judge a Vaishnava by so-called good qualities, this is Aparat. Vaishnav Bhagavatam talk about 26 qualities of Vaishnav. Clean, expert, poetic, soft, amitabhu, don't eat too much, always control mind and senses. If you glorify Vaishnav by these qualities, this is offense. Because being poetic and merciful, these are not the qualities which makes a Vaishnava worship. Oh, Gurudev so kind, he gave me a pomegranate. How merciful, how detached. This is not what makes him worshipful. What is the main defining quality of a Vaishnava? Surrender to Krishna. Krishnoika Sadhana. This is the defining principle of a Vaishnava. Fully surrendered to Krishna. Fully surrendered to Guru. This is the defining principle of Vaishnava. And these other 25 qualities are like servants. If you glorify Vaishnava for the 25 external qualities, this is called Vaishnava Therefore, many people glorify Gurudev, like I remember. Like Gurudev would ask disciples, speak about the glories of your Gurudev. And he would ask disciples of Bhakti Dhan Swami Maharaj, stand up. I remember 90% of them would say, uh, I was going to university, uh, 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 I got a book, uh, uh, I met Prabhupada. Uh. They just talk about themselves. But Gurudev would never do that when he would glorify his Gurudev. Because he knew properly how to glorify. Anyway, now it's late, milk is getting cold. 
So thank you everyone for coming. Maybe we should start class half an hour earlier. Is that possible? 7.30, because always we run out of time. Okay, thank you everyone. Haribo, try and come for Kartik. Beg, borrow, steal, sell a kidney, sell a child. Roho has three. This Kartik will be very wonderful. You're thinking about coming. Chidananda, if you're going to come, you have to write to someone. You always just turn up and give everyone so much headache. So if you're coming, you have to write. Okay? Okay, everyone. Thank you very much. Haribo. Dandava Pranams. Jai Jai Shiva. Thank you.